long-hulled naval base, strategic center, Singapore is above all one of the ramparts of that freedom for which the British Empire stands. Founded in 1819, the foresight of Stamford Raffles has been blessed by later generations of statesmen entrusted with the safety of the empire. After the Great War, it was decided to construct a first-class naval and air base at Solita, adjacent to Singapore itself. The opening took place in 1938, the governor, Sir Shenton Thomas, breaking the tape with the bows of his yacht. With simple ceremony, the biggest graving dock in the world was named after King George VI, among those present being the British Navy. Then there were distinguished guests from the Malay states. And officers from two American cruisers whose attendance demonstrated the friendly interest of the United States in British sea power. The importance of Singapore as a naval base can scarcely be exaggerated. All shipping to and from the Far East must pass here under the eye of British naval patrols. And let tribute be paid to the Malays who are born seamen as well as loyal friends of the British Empire. They man the numerous flotillas of minesweepers, sloops and escort vessels based on the port. As Singapore commands the eastern entrance to the Indian Ocean, so the security of the great Indian Empire has been enormously increased. That home of magnificent fighting men is able to mass her resources for the conflict in which her destiny is vitally at stake. Undistracted by the worries of self-defense, she has been able to send large numbers of experienced men overseas to serve under General Wavell. How well those men have upheld the reputation of India's warriors is common knowledge. In the western desert, where their motorized formations burst through to victory at Sidi Barani, in Eritrea, where Indian battalions have taken a prominent part in the pursuit of the Italians from the Sudanese frontier to the Red Sea. All this thanks to that command of the Indian Ocean. At its northwestern exit are mounted the guns of Aden. Just as Singapore stands at the gateway from the Pacific, so Aden guards the entrance from the Red Sea. It is the outer lock on the sea route from the Mediterranean and Eastern Europe. Past Aden, on their way to Egypt, came the great transports bearing Australians and New Zealanders to the theatre of war in the Middle East. Here again was a voyage accomplished in safety thanks to the security of the Indian Ocean. Those Australians who disembarked so light-heartedly at Suez are the same men who mopped up the Italian army in Libya. Then, by the same dispensation, South Africans arrived in Kenya. Men from the Union landed in the East African colony to fight their way through to Addis Ababa. So we see what benefits have flowed from the forethought which closed the Indian Ocean so securely against aggressors. From the Cape, up the African coast to Aden, and across the ocean to Singapore, British sea power remains unchallenged. Moreover, the influence of Singapore extends beyond the Indian Ocean even so far as Australia, whose own navy would cooperate in the protection of her northern coastline. The port of Darwin in this region is Australia's window on the world. The town, which has a cosmopolitan population, holds a vital position on the Empire air route. Here the brother Smith landed on the first flight from England to Australia. Darwin is a military post manned by Australian regular forces in peacetime. Throughout the Pacific are communities enjoying freedom and prosperity under British rule. For instance, Fiji. Guided by British law and order, Fijians are encouraged to progress along the lines of their own customs and culture. Hong Kong has just celebrated its centenary. 
This famous colony with its 2,000 foot mountain has been called the Gibraltar of the East and was Britain's chief base in the Far East until the construction of Singapore's dock. Hong Kong has been very close to a war for five years or more and its defenses are correspondingly strong. They owe a great deal to Chinese labor, which is aiding in the preparation of new gun emplacements. The harbor is well protected. A gate opens in the net to let one of our own submarines pass through. Here also are stationed small motor torpedo boats, which can do up to 50 knots. They launch their torpedoes at the enemy while the mountain batteries fire out to sea. Finally, we come back to Malaya, the peninsula which has Singapore as its tip. In Malaya's valleys and swamps lie the rice fields. This typical scene shows the harvest being gathered. Malaya in its primitive state is jungle country and to clear the ground, whether for more rice fields, for rubber plantations or for the extension of fortifications, is quite a job in tree felling. That is the way the site for the dock was cleared. But of course, over the vast hinterland of Malaya, the jungle still stretches. It's about the thickest in the world, and progress through it would be impossible except by hacking out a path. In such conditions, to ambush an enemy is a comparatively simple job for Malay soldiers, knowing the lie of the land and the way of the jungle. Among the rubber estates, maneuvers are easier. Trained by British officers, the Malay regiment has become a very fine fighting force. Supplementing the local units are men from India, for India has sent her soldiers east as well as west. And anti-aircraft batteries, manned by Punjabis, practice their skill off the coast of Johor. And of course there are battalions from Britain herself. They have brought with them the familiar Bren carrier which, though it can't penetrate the jungle, does negotiate the very tricky ground on its fringes. Yes, Singapore is well equipped and prepared to deal with anything which may arise in the Far East, and at the same time to reach out a protective arm from the Cape to Hong Kong from Aden to Darwin. Above the city and around it fly the sentinels of empire, the vanguard of our striking power, the Royal Air Force. Commander-in-chief of the Far East is Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham with control over land as well as air forces. Such is the recognized importance of air power in modern warfare. And the fleet air arm is to be found at Singapore too. Torpedo carriers such as smashed the Italian fleet at Taranto practice in the Straits of Johor. at all points, Malaya awaits whatever destiny may have in store for her, in the same spirit of preparedness and valor which inspires the whole empire.